Hello everyone and welcome to our beginner's guide on Skull and Bones. If you're new here or looking to get started in Skull and Bones you've come to the right place. With the release of Skull and Bones only a few days away, in this video we're going to cover all the basics you need to get started. From ship essentials to trading tips we've got you covered. Before we jump in, some of you out there might not have seen Skull and Bones and are wondering what it's about. Skull and Bones is an action adventure pirate game developed by Ubisoft Singapore where you play by your own rules to rise from a nobody to become the most fearsome pirate kingpin. Now, let's jump right into the video. First things first, when you start the game and you're in your small ship, the Dow, after the opening sequence, you'll be able to sail around the Exeter. This is the big ship crashed on the rocks. The area around the wreck is full of broken planks, metal salvage and rusty nails. Though these materials aren't fantastic, they're better than nothing. Once you dock at St Anne's, just store them in your warehouse for later use. Now let's talk about one of the main parts of the game, the ships. When you start off your pirate adventure, you will be in the Dow. This is an extra small ship with very limited attacking and upgrading options. With this ship, you have spears at your disposal and that is all. The only plus side is that you can never run out of spears. As you follow the story in the beginning of the game, you will run through crafting a better ship. In this case, the Badar, along with all the extra options for ships, for example, the cannons and furniture. You want to really take your time here and familiarise yourself with shipbuilding. Make sure you have equipped all the cannons you can to your ship to make battling on the sea that little bit easier. Also make sure you have any furniture you've acquired equipped as this will increase certain stats on your ship. And don't forget the ship armour. When equipped, this will give your ship a base armour stat along with giving you a certain percentage of damage mitigation against certain things, for example, fire damage. Another thing you can do with your ships is manage their cargo. You can store your cargo in two places, these are your ship and the warehouse. Depending on the ship you're currently using, you only have a certain amount of storage. You will find, as you're out on the sea picking up resources and loot, that your inventory will fill up rather quickly. To avoid this, you only need to bring certain things with you such as food, repair kits and cannonballs. All crafting supplies such as planks and metal can be stored in the warehouse. I recommend doing this every time you dock at a den or outpost. To avoid the situation where you're out on the sea and you find some good loot, but hey ho, you've got to leave it behind because you're at capacity. Speaking of loot, we come to the next point. Do not destroy the enemy ship. Now. I know it might be tempting to just unleash everything you have as you like to watch other ships burn, but hold on. In Skull and Bones, you can board enemy ships when their health bar goes down to a certain amount. If you're wanting to get as much loot out of an enemy ship as possible, this is what you'll want to do, as boarding ships is a guaranteed way to gain extra loot and not lose anything to the sea. Sometimes boarding ships can be a little irritating as if you're sailing too fast you'll fly right by them but stick with it as it's worth it. When you're out on the sea not looting and destroying other ships I recommend going out of your way to discover fast travel points. The map in Skull and Bones is rather large and if the wind isn't in your favour it can make travelling from one side of the map to the other a rather long process. By unlocking these fast travel points you can save yourself a lot of time but you will also have to pay a small amount of silver each time you want to use them. Along with everything we've currently discussed about ships, you will also need to be aware of your stamina bar. That's right, your ship has a stamina bar, and this is where food comes into things. As you sail, your stamina bar will deplete. The faster you sail, the faster your stamina bar will deplete. To help with this, you will need to eat the food you've been collecting, but there are certain things you can do to make the most of your food. Let's take a coconut for example. You can eat this raw and it will still restore some of your stamina, 10% for 30 minutes to be precise. However, to get more out of the coconut you can toss it on the grill. After grilling the coconut you will get, believe it or not, a grilled coconut. Now, this will give you 30% stamina regen rather than 10%. And for the last tip on food, I would highly recommend putting any food into your quick slot so that when you're busy sailing or fighting on the sea, you can recharge your stamina with just a click of a button. Now, let's talk a bit about scouting other ships. 
While you're sailing around, you'll notice that you have the option to use a spyglass. This allows you to get a closer look at the other ships on the sea. This will give you the ability to do a little bit of threat assessment. For example, how big the ship is, what firepower it's packing and what kind of threat it's going to be. I'm sure you get the picture. This could come in very handy and save you storming into battle just to get obliterated. The other perks are identifying potential valuables. Some ships may be carrying valuable resources such as jewels, whereas others might not have the items you need. This allows you to be clever with which ships you decide to fight or leave alone. Let's dive into the resources a little more. It's important to know that resources play a huge part in crafting and completing quests as well as earning silver. Resources are used for crafting armour, weapons and tools. By collecting these you will be able to craft more powerful equipment, leading to an easier time on the sea. As well as crafting, resources are also used to complete quests. Many quests will have you go out and collect certain resources and return them to the NPC. By collecting these you will gain infamy as well as rewards. As a little bonus, when you arrive at St Anne, head straight over to the mailbox and you'll receive a message from an anonymous Son of Liberty. In this you'll gain a few items but most notably the 5 repair kits. These kits could be the difference between successfully blowing up your enemy's ship or the enemy blowing up your ship. Make sure you keep checking back at the mailbox when you level up for more rewards. Now let's go on to getting the best experience out of the game. Skull and Bones heavily focuses on the multiplayer gameplay. From personal experience, playing with friends or even other players in the world is the best experience. Not only is it more fun, but it will also lessen the difficulty of high level contracts and you will get to share any loot with all those in your party. Speaking of contracts, these are a great way to gain experience or as it's called in Skull and Bones, infamy. You will want to gain as much infamy as possible as some items are locked behind high infamy levels such as weapons, ships and other resources. And finally, finish the main quest line. I was guilty at first of getting sidetracked just sailing around the sea and exploring, but the fastest path to increasing your infamy rank and getting new ship designs is to complete the John Skurlock story. And that wraps up this beginner's guide to Skull and Bones. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to check out all the other videos on our channel, including more Skull and Bones content to come. If you've got any tips or tricks for beginners, or you want to tell us about your experience playing Skull and Bones, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you check out all the socials in the description below, along with our community discord. This has been Dan from Realm Space Gaming, hoping you enjoy the rest of your day.